Hey guys, Genesis Frenzy here, and welcome back to another episode of me giving up on life. Today we're going to be talking about why I think gaming companies nowadays need to just stop and rethink what they're doing just a bit. Now lately, if you don't know, a lot of gaming companies have just been releasing just unfinished products, have been making ridiculous business decisions, and just overall have not been exactly the best uh, at winning over their audiences and it really does upset me because a lot of these gaming companies I actually really do like I mean let, let's look at some of the ones that have been acting up a bit recently now the number one uh, company in the news uh, at the moment is definitely Konami Konami recently just basically said, yeah, you know all those console games, you know what we, you know, the games that kind of made us who we are, we're just gonna toss those off to the side and focus completely on mobile, because that's exactly where the money is, correct? Um, and basically they're just like, yeah, we've, we're gonna focus on games that, you know, you pay, you pay as you go, you have microtransactions, they literally said, uh, we are gonna make games that you pay as you go. Great, fantastic. And this is just this just upsets me because Konami is a very respectable company. They made a lot of great games. Contra is fantastic. Castlevania is legendary. Metal Gear Solid is easily one of the greatest storytelling games ever made. Hell, it's one of the best stories. I mean, Jesus Christ, that game is incredible. And then they own all of uh, Hudson Soft's stuff. They own Bomberman and whatever Hudson, uh, whatever else Hudson made um, but, but yeah Konami makes good games they do Metal Gear Rising I love Metal Gear Rising that was a fantastic game awesome gameplay just one of the best soundtracks ever and I, I just overall really like Metal Gear Rising but now that Konami is pretty much dead I highly doubt we're gonna be seeing any type of sequel to Metal Gear Rising or Hell, even in the Metal Gear series, I mean, at this point, they've already cancelled Silent Hills, they've taken PT off the shop, which, I, I reviewed PT on my Halloween games episode, I guess I'm sort of like one of the few people who actually reviewed that game now, I guess. Uh, consider that my look at Silent Hills, I would be too scared to actually play Silent Hills, so yeah. But, but really, you know, my, my major, my, my, my major problem with Konami and what they did is that they just sort of at the heat of everything at the heat of their just bad price they just said they just they just like yeah let's just pull out let's just pull out of the industry entirely but the thing is, is that they were going down that path anyway if you looked at everything they were doing and all the bad decisions they were making of course Konami was going to go under for what they were doing but technically Konami is not going under just yet still they are going to release metal gear solid 5 which you know why wouldn't they they already sunk a bunch of money into it if they didn't that'd just be f suicide for the company so they are going to release metal gear solid 5 no doubt about that but the thing is that i'm probably not going to be buying it at least buying it new because i don't want to support konami at all for what they've done for everything everything that they've done over the past month it's just ridiculous it is completely ridiculous what they've done and honestly Konami is Konami is pretty much rip they they will continue to make games on mobile probably and I do think that you know after Metal Gear Solid 5 I, I really highly doubt that they're gonna make another one uh, maybe maybe they might they might make a Metal Gear Solid Rise or Metal Gear Rising 2 because that technically doesn't need Kojima on it but since Kojima's gone they're pretty much screwed they're screwed and yeah, I, I just like Konami is just a company that I, I liked. I liked I, I, I liked some of their games, but I, I guess like I'm not exactly emotionally attached to Konami, but they definitely are a heavy hitter in the gaming industry. It's like it's like Capcom, it's like Sega, it's like Nintendo. Konami is definitely up there in some of the most like respectable gaming companies of all time. So to see them just completely just wither and die now is pretty sad, but it is a sign of the changing times with gaming and how much, you know, development of gaming costs now, considering that, you know, graphics are getting more and more 
you know, the graphics are getting more and more realistic. Uh, games are just getting more and more expensive to make, and a lot of these companies, unless they, you know, release a game that's like really that just makes sold just sells millions of copies. I highly doubt that we're going to see profit among them because if you remember what happened to Square Enix where they were like, yeah, Hitman Absolution and Tomb Raider, they did well, they sold a lot of copies, they sold millions of copies, but it just wasn't quite enough. It wasn't quite enough to make a profit off of them, which is kind of ridiculous when you think about it because it's like, are you, are you, are you joking? Are you joking? Those games, they weren't enough for you? So, yeah. But basically... My, my 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 final thoughts on Konami is that it was gonna happen. It was gonna happen. They 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 were asking for it essentially from all from every all the things that they do, were doing after firing Konami. I mean Kojima and being like and just being like all vague about it and then canceling Silent Hills and then pulling PT from the shop and pulling PT from the server so you can even re-download it. Pulling PT from like PS4s with uh, PT installed on it from eBay after like leaving the the New York Stock Exchange, and just and just after an announcement like this, it's it's pretty much set in stone why Konami is is has gone the way they've gone, and it is pretty sad because Konami it made a lot of great games and they do have a legacy behind them, but just how it is. Now as for other gaming companies, you know, looking at Kickst uh, the Kickstarter recently, we have a uh, ukulele, which is the spiritual successor to Banjo Kazooie, and it's made by the uh, employees who used to work at Rare. Um, and then we have the other one that is the spiritual successor to Castlevania called Bloodstained, and that looks pretty cool as well. It's made by the guy who made Symphony of the Night. I am pretty sure. So a lot of these, uh, a lot of the people who worked on games before are probably going to be moving to Kickstarter because these, those projects got funded incredibly fast. Like Ukulele got funded in like 14 minutes or something. That's just completely insane because that they were like, that was like a, a, what, like half a million dollars, and they got it within 14 minutes. Do you know how crazy that is? I mean, I thought like the Pebble, what was it, like the Pebble watch one of the pebble watches like got like a really like high funding amount really fast and i still think that's the fastest but for, for, to see a game a game which is a relatively new media getting such like insane like it, it, it's just crazy you know so i think that the resurgence in kickstarter projects is great because there's been a lot of uh controversy with kickstarter and how like you know what if they don't release the game what if the game is canceled what if they just take the money and run what about the oculus rift which got bought by facebook i mean we invested the we we kickstarted the thing what is why do they get to sell it to facebook and whatever so i do like that the a lot of the a lot of the people who worked on all the classics are just going to leave these companies because these companies obviously are out of touch with their consumers and they're just going to make the games themselves and get funded by the fans and release the games. I mean, look at what happened to Keiji Inafune. He left Capcom and basically he just said, I'm just going to make my own Mega Man. He made his own Mega Man and got funded really fast. You know, uh, uh, um, the employees left Rare after Microsoft just like completely shreked rare um and now they're making their own spiritual successor to banjo kazooie which you know um <laughs> ukulele actually i don't know if that might no i don't think it's gonna infringe on copyright but it's it's, it's so dangerously similar to banjo kazooie that it's almost like hmm, <laughs> it's almost like can they actually get away with this but I, th I think they will i think they will at this point i think it's fine and then uh, the guy uh, Iga Ra Iga Rashi, I think that's his. It's probably wrong. It's probably I got it wrong, didn't I? Is now making uh, the spiritual successor to Castlevania Symphony of the Night. So it's like all these all these people are just going to Kickstarter. Like way forward, uh, Sean Tay uh, was half genie hero. I think was um, funded through Kickstarter. Um, uh, Tim Schafer, the guy who makes uh, Grim Fandango and the uh, Monkey Island games. He, uh, he, I think he funded one of his games through uh, Kickstarter. So a lot of these companies are going, I mean, a lot of these uh, developers are going through Kickstarter now because they want to be directly funded by the fans. And that's cool. I like that. Because, you know, you want to get in touch with your audience. You want to see if there actually is an audience for the thing. 
and there has been proven that there is audiences for these games, and that's great. You don't have to go through a big company anymore to actually publish games and make profit. Great. Fantastic. And I do think that indie games are actually going to pick up a lot more steam as these companies just fail after fail. Now, if we look at other gaming companies... As for Square Enix, Square Enix is actually a company that I really like because they have a lot of products that they actually, a lot of uh, franchises that I really like. Like Hitman. Hitman is definitely one of my favorite series ever, like of all time. I love Hitman. It's a fantastic stealth game, and and uh, they're releasing a new one, and I cannot wait for it. Uh, Final Fantasy 15 looks absolutely incredible. I cannot wait for that game to come out. Um, uh, what else do they have? Square Enix, Square Enix. Uh, S Sleeping Dogs, the sequel to Sleeping Dogs, looks really good. Uh, what's it called? Triad Wars? Looks really good. Uh, overall, with Square Enix, I, I like what they're doing a lot more than other companies. I, I do think they're actually, like, they're making a bit more of a profit, but I think that Square Enix is also sort of like, you know, let's just do some mobile stuff, because Square Enix charges is like an arm and a leg for a so many of their, like, classics on, like, uh, Steam and on mobile. Like, seriously, their Final Fantasy games on Android and stuff are just ridiculously overpriced. It's just, it's just silly. Like, I think it's, like, fifteen ninety nine for Final Fantasy IV. It's just, come on, guys, just stop. Just make it $10. $10 is fine, okay? For a Final Fantasy game, for an entire Final Fantasy game, that is fine. But for mobile, it's just, like, ridiculous how, like... How much they charge, but f I think Square Enix is on is, uh, is it's more on my positive. It's it's in a more positive light to me. Then we have Sega. Sega recently was like, yeah, you know, uh, we're kind of like failing at this uh, console thing, so we are going to just you know we're literally a few console games. We still own Atlas, so we're all cool there. We're gonna uh, uh, release uh, Persona Five. Um, we have, we still have Sonic. Sonic is still cool. He's profitable, uh, but they basically said like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna slightly shift our focus to mobile and PC gaming, which understandable because mobile and PC is a lot more profitable nowadays. I think so. It, I mean, because console gaming, it, it, unless you have like a really big hit, it's really it's hard to actually make profit off of a console game now. So yeah. Um, but Sega, Sega is definitely, like, Sega is so classic to me, like, I, I freaking love Sega. I, lo I love, I love their consoles, I love their games, and just seeing them turn to mobile as well, well, I guess they're still on PC, so they're still, they're still technically on a good platform. <laughs> okay, not to say that mobile is bad, but mobile is definitely not exactly my first choice to play games. I do not play games on my phone, like, at all, not even emulators. I, I have my Vita, I have my 3DS, I have other consoles that I carry with me on the go to play my, my uh, handheld games. I do not play games on my phone. But 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 basically, like, I, I think that Sega is, um, they're, they're just, they're, they're just doing what other, what, what, like, what Square Enix and uh, Konami are doing now, where they're just... They're trying to make a profit off of mobile, but I do think that Sega... Sega, I think, buying Atlas was a fantastic decision, because Atlas is still very relevant in Japan. So, and, I, they're, hell, they're still relevant here. They still make a lot of games that I enjoy. So I do think that them having Atlas is a fantastic asset. Okay, so that's great. But I, I do think that, you know, in terms of Sega's core franchises... They're kind of running on the last few cylinders that they actually have. I mean, Sonic still sells. Son I don't know if Sonic actually still makes a profit. I, I, okay, yeah, I do think he did. I think Sonic Lost World made a profit, but I don't know about Sonic Boom for obvious reasons. So, yeah, I think Sonic Boom sold a lot, actually, so that's surprising. But, you know, Sonic's reputation is kind of... Uh, well, I mean, he was picking up a reputation uh, after Generations and Colors and uh, All Stars Racing Transform and Lost World, but now we, we we retracted. But good thing, good thing that this was not made by Sonic Team. Okay, it was made by a different company, so it's technically not made by the people who made uh, the the other Sonic game. So fine. But Sonic Boom uh, was not good. But. 
I, I do think that Sega still has a ha, still has franchises in them. They just don't utilize them, which is a lot. Which is usually the case with a lot of companies. Like Square Enix still has like access to so many franchises. Konami has access to so many franchises. They just do not use them. Um, and, and the same goes for Capcom too. Capcom is doing a little better now. They were not doing very well. Uh, I guess like a year ago, but they're definitely. They, I think they actually like made a profit with. Um, with uh, the Resident Evil uh, remake for uh, PS4 and Xbox One, um, I think that they're. I think that they the the Devil May Cry uh, Definitive Edition uh, did rather well. I think that the Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition is going to do rather well. Um, and they're also focusing more on HD remasters now, which yeah, and, uh, I'm not a. I like that in, in some respects. I do like you know. Oh, we get to see a lot of. Uh, reimaginings or like remakes of some classic games but I don't know exactly if that's a great thing because you know I want to see new games but hey you know maybe like once they remaster these games they'll see hey there's an audience for this and start making new games for that old franchise but uh, Capcom is also gonna release Street Fighter 5 which other than being only on PS4 and PC which is weird it's like is it is it a is it an exclusive or not it's no i guess it's not gonna be an xbox one okay whatever um but uh but yeah i think capcom's doing a little better i think capcom and square enix are on the uh, at least a little better on the financial side but sega i think is down there and i do think that uh konami is obviously really down there um as for other uh, game companies. Uh, Nintendo, I, I, I just want to freaking lay into Nintendo so badly, but that, that video would go on forever. Um, I, I'm just not exactly a fan of what Nintendo has been doing lately. I'm not a fan of Nintendo's recent games other than like Smash. Uh, just, I think Nintendo just is not exactly appealing to me lately with the new 3DS being meh, with some of their decisions with the Amiibo, with just or just actually just the amiibo in general um and just their copyright claiming of videos and it's just nintendo is not exactly on good terms with me right now uh as for like uh, sony you know sony is just completely disappointing me right now there's bloodborne i haven't played it but it looks nice um but other than that the ps4 has completely not justified the four hundred dollars that was spent on it because it, it just does not have any exclusive games that I feel like those are console sellers. It has indie games, but those indie games are also on PC. It has it's like Infamous, which is a good game, but it's not a console seller. It kills them, which is meh. Knack, which is bad. Um, the Order 1886, which is not very good. It's just like the PS4 is completely not justified the purchase at all. So I'm not a huge fan of PlayStation at the moment, although I do like uh, the Vita. The Vita is still a fantastic console, getting a lot of support there. But the PS4, is I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, as for Microsoft, Microsoft is doing a lot better. I, I do like I do like the Xbox One a lot. It's definitely completely have it is completely different than what it was in 2013, which is great. So I do like the Xbox One. I do play on it from time to time, but really, uh, it's not exactly fantastic either. N none of the consoles are exactly fantastic. Uh, the PS4 is only selling because the Xbox One made those few mistakes in the beginning, and people still like have this like stigma against the Xbox One. It's like the Xbox One sucks so much because when they announced it, it was bad. Which yes, it was bad, but now they've completely redone everything, and it's a good console now. Can you guys just shut up? Just please. Like, I am... I don't, I don't get why there's this just hatred for the Xbox One. It's like, the Xbox is, One is just bad. It's just bad because, you know, everybody else thinks it's bad. And, hey, let's give some let's give some reasoning. And usually those reasons are outdated. It's like, well, you have to have the Kinect. No, you don't. Well, it's oh, expensive. No, it's not. It's actually cheaper than the PS4. Uh, you, you have to be always online. No, you don't. Uh, you can't buy used games. Yes, you can. Uh, the PS4 is better games. Subjective, but honestly, right now, no, it doesn't. <laughs> so, yeah, I do think that the Xbox One has a lot of good stuff coming up on the horizon with Windows 10 and all that. And I do think, um, I, I do think the Xbox One is a bright future. As for PC gaming, PC gaming is something that I, I, I've been doing a lot more lately and I do enjoy. 
but uh, but yeah, I mean it's just it's just the mood I'm in right now. I'm just I'm just playing playing some more games on PC. But anyway, that is about it. Uh, I, I can talk about other companies. I can talk about WB Games and how god awful their goddamn prison business practices are with uh, freaking season passes costing forty dollars and their games are good. Their games are good. Oh my god, Batman Arkham Knight looks great. Mortal Kombat X looks fantastic. Mad Max looks like an awesome game, but they are just messing it up with all the DLC and all the season passes, and I just cannot stand it right now. But I do think that bright things will come. I do think bright things will come for the gaming industry. Hopefully, we just need we need to see something. We need to see something different. We need to see a fall from grace or something. Because, honestly, the gaming industry right now is not exactly in the best state. Game companies, good game companies, are going under because game development costs so much now. We need to just... We need to think of some, something other. I think that the indie games are definitely going to be taking over. Because if AAA development is something that is just getting more and more obsolete by just the year. So, unless you sell, like crazy like Grand Theft Auto 5 or Call of Duty or something then you're probably not gonna make a profit which is ridiculous now the game development just costs way too much money so really I, I think that I think that the game industry needs something to happen we need something to happen to shake it up a bit just so things can get a lot better for everybody so that is about it I will see you guys for the next one Genesis Frenzy sending off